So let's look now at the next design layer to add to our model, which are roads, pathways, and access in general. The water layer really sets the bones and main patterns of the design in place, and the access layer follows it closely. For starters, let's look at the places where we've already made connecting lines across the landscape, our water diversion drains, and the embankments of our ponds. Water and access are married here in our design, and we can construct them simultaneously in this case, where the gutter of the road is conveying water that runs off the surface of the road itself and also is collecting any other water moving down the landscape to where we're directing it, right? So the place where we put this diversion, we've also put a road. As far as water flow goes, another really stable place to put roadways are right on the ridges. This is because on the ridge, there's no water flowing from elsewhere onto it. The only water that flows on a ridge is what is falling on it directly. So there's not the momentum that's built up for the road to become an unintentional stream, like when the water, like when the water flows from the upper landscape into the drainages. So I'll now put some roads in on some of the ridges of our site. So here I put a road on this ridge and then connected it into our road that goes on our embankment and our diversion. So you can see when I make it rain here that our ridges remain dry while our valleys become wet and we have rainfall over the whole landscape. So the water will flow evenly off of both sides of a ridge road, right? So this road here that's just dead on the ridge, the water is going to flow this way, it's going to flow this way. It's not going to flow straight down that ridge road, right? Now, we could put in a road that's going directly down slope, and let's see what happens. So it's definitely common practice for people to just put roads going straight down a slope. But what happens when it rains is those roads become conduits for water. And they basically can become sources of erosion. They can become sources for landscape dehydration. So if a, if a road is going to go straight up and down a slope, having it dead on the ridge is the safest place for that to go. So we'll get rid of that ugly road, won't we? So we have to be really, really careful about siting roads, right? A road going down a hill can become a stream and conveyance of water, rapidly moving it where you may not want it, right? And a road properly placed can become actually a beneficial conveyance of water. Now, we also have another opportunity to put a good road in here. Um, the embankments of our lower ponds, those could become uh, roads that could connect our whole system. So I'm going to do a little work here and I'm actually going to put a road that connects these lower embankments and makes a loop for our entire road system for our little farm here. All right, so now we have this road that connects these embankments. There could also be some kind of overflow feature from this pond flowing over to this pond right here. We have a road that now is on the boundary of our water reconstitution zone with our water irrigation zone. Now these aren't all necessarily like vehicle pathways. For instance, perhaps this is for a small utility vehicle like an ATV or even a walking path going right up the embankment of this pond. This could just be a connecting trail. Um, each site is going to be unique and the needs for access for foot small utility vehicle or larger vehicle are all going to be very specific to the operations of your particular site. So if we really do a great job with the soils and make them spongy and absorbent throughout the whole site, then over time we should have less and less runoff in the landscape. And in time, the only runoff that actually is moving through the land may be water that actually falls on the roadways themselves. Or maybe only during very extreme rain events when the landscape's completely saturated, will there be water flowing through and over the soils and intercepting 
these road diversions. But otherwise, if you think about water flowing over this whole landscape, and you think about the soils being very spongy, then in time, we will not have what I am showing you right now with water pouring over the whole thing. We will really only have water hitting our compacted road surfaces and being channeled to where those roadways and uh, associated ditches are moving that water, right? So it really depends on the types of weather and climate in your location. But under normal circumstances, we really should size ponds based on road runoff because roads will remain compacted. And over time, they will always remain as a reliable source of water from runoff. It's really easy when the landscape is non-absorptive and compacted to put in swales and ponds and have them all fill. But if the goal is to create this beautifully absorbent and spongy soil, then the aim is to not have runoff over the greater landscape. So really the roads are the only, it's the only runoff that we can count on for sure over time. So there you have it. This is the axis layer of our design. You can also begin to see the roads as dividers of the landscape into management blocks, but more on that later. Next up, we're gonna look at adding more trees and the vegetative layer. So stay tuned.